Hi, my name is Wayne from Tracks Power Dolly, and today we're going to do an unboxing video of the TX6000 and show you what's inside the box. Okay, so you're going to want to get a uh, utility knife of some sort. This is how it's going to arrive at your door from the FedEx truck. So we're going to go along and just cut the tape across here, and cut across this side, and then carefully down the middle without going down very deep. Just cut the tape. So, we can open up the box. We're done with the knife. You'll see we have a, a thick cardboard lid, first of all. Now, come over here, take a look inside. We have, and this is important, maybe even take a picture of this with your phone. Uh, if for some reason you do decide to return the dolly, we want you to package it exactly as you see it because sometimes it doesn't arrive back to us in a safe condition and there can be some damage. So this foam box here is designed to support the space between the body and the box so it doesn't shift around. And we're gonna take this guy out. Now we have two cardboard side pieces. So we can just grab this guy. Kind of wiggle it up. You're going to see in the bottom here our ball mount is located inside. So we're going to flip this over. Now, again, we're going to want our knife. So this is labeled this is a 2 and 5 16 ball inside of here already. Lift this guy out. I'm going to set him aside. And go aside. And the opposite side is going to be the handle. So we'll lift him out, turn him over. Again, there'll be some tape across here. I need that tape. I'm just going to slide right up. Okay, so this is the T handle. Uh, and then lastly, you'll see inside is the machine. So it's best if you can get someone to give you a hand to lift the machine out, or worst case scenario, you have to cut the box so you can roll it out. So I'm gonna get someone to assist me to lift this thing out. Okay, you'll see we now have lifted this up onto a table just for you to easily see it. We've got three pieces now. We've got our ball mount, our handle, and the dolly itself. So again with the knife, very carefully that we're only cutting plastic. I'm just gonna start to Take our time to unwrap this thing. Okay, well set. So you notice on the back here, there is a, a clip. This is the clip that holds the handle in. I'm just going to take it out and set it aside. We're going to open up the lid of the dolly. And be careful when you open it, just to gently set it down. Don't let it crash in there. We have, these are our quick clamps, our quick disconnects. I guess not clamps, or disconnects for each individual battery. We're going to disconnect those two. We have a strap inside here. We're just gonna undo that by just pinching the sides. We pinch the sides. There's a box in here. Now, this has the eight hour optional charger on board built into the lid. Here's the box. And it's amazing how many people will say, oh, they sent me a second charger. Please open the box because there's a lot of parts inside here. So let's have a look. We just use this box because we, it comes with the charger already, so we have these extra boxes. So, again, a little bit of tape across the bottom. And what do we have inside? We have, this is the charger cable for the charger. And it looks just like a computer cord, and it plugs in right into here. We have three black and three red battery protection boots that are gonna go on the battery. We'll show you that in a little bit. We have a set of two Allen wrenches. These are for the throttle and putting the key handle together. 
There's a ring and a turnbuckle. This is used to hook onto your trailer jack leg and then this turnbuckle hooks onto the ball mount and stabilizes everything. We'll show you that in a minute. We have this box. This box includes a bearing. So this is called a thrust bearing. You're just going to take it out of the plastic. And what this does, it's just a bearing, but it's meant for two surfaces to twist together. So you'll notice that there is one side is going to be kind of fixed to the, to the outer ring. The other side moves in the middle. I want you to take that part that moves in the middle, put it down, and then we're going to drop this right inside the cup and the frame of the dolly. And drop that in there. When that ball mount goes on, it's going to pivot on top of that thrust bearing and it's going to kind of act like power steering to the dolly. This is what we call an over center cam. So this handle, as it goes up and it goes from a straight line, it goes over that straight line center and it locks in place. And the principle behind this is your trailer coupler goes on. The very critical part is you flip the latch on top of your trailer coupler and it's going to go underneath and capture the ball on the underside. So with this thing, the way it works, as you can see, our ball goes up and down. Really at no point do you want the ball threaded all the way down because you're just not going to be able to get this handle up. Think of this as like a pair of vice grips. We're turning the nut on the end of the handle and we find that sweet spot that when you capture it, you know, if it's if it's too low, it's just, this will be tight. So you're gonna open it up a little bit more. And if it's too high, this will just go loose. It won't really hook on properly. So you wanna find that sweet spot, just like a pair of vice grips, until it goes, it'll be hard, it'll snap over center, and it'll stay put up there. So, so this is what they call an Atwood style coupler. And it's a real whole different animal because it has this top upper flange where most trailer couplers have a bottom flat flange surface. So we've got a special adapter for the Atwood with this puzzle piece that goes up and just seals on there to that profile. Nice as could be. So the way this works, puzzle tab goes in the here. Boom, just literally like a jigsaw puzzle. Now we've got to find this sweet spot, so when it goes up, it's going to lock in there. And it's okay if it's up and there's some air gap in there because you've got a lot of thread in here. So we're going to try it. So we can now. This is this is different, right? So this normally is welded or attached right to the tongue of your trailer, but I have a separate. The other thing we can do sometimes is if you're not sure where that piece is going to be, you can grab this. You can literally take the ball, stick the ball up, flip the catch, and then it'll just hang there. And then you find that spot where it's gonna lock in place. So right there, boom. I wouldn't want it any tighter than that, but now that thing is locked square to that surface. So that's kind of a trick you can do. Pull the ball mount out, and that way you're not having to raise and lower your coupler all the time. You can just try it. Oh, I gotta loosen the ball, tighten the ball until you get close. So, this is on here. Now we have a super positive lock. Actually, these Atwood couplers are really fantastic because of the design, it is super strong. Um, I wanna talk about this ring that we supply with your dolly and a heavy duty turnbuckle. It's not even needed on an Atwood style coupler like this, but on other trailers, you may have, and I wanna stress that this ring is designed to go up underneath the jack leg of your trailer jack. So it's not connected to the dolly whatsoever, this goes on your trailer. Some people will have a little square foot on here with a pin that you can remove. Some have a welded foot that you can't remove, which means you're not getting this on. But again, there's a there's hundred different styles of trailers. Some might have this jack way back here. If that happens, so the purpose of this, we want to join our turnbuckle from this ring on our coupler, okay, back to this. So whether it is here, okay, whether we're here, we want to get it on, we're just going to snug everybody up, and we're adding a second point of stabilization. So everybody's snugged up, but you might have it where that won't work for you. You might have it where your jack leg is right back here in a little piece of chain. A lot of times you'll have the safety chains on your trailer. Well, you can hook on your safety chain, hook it on here, 
hook it on to a link on that chain and pull things tight. Or if that doesn't work, get a second little piece of chain. You can go to Harbor Freight anywhere and buy some chain. Hook it on to whatever you can underneath and if you can get it lower the better because we're adding that extra stabilization point to reduce some of the stress on this fitting up here. But this is the purpose of this turn buckle and ring. It's just a hook on to here, okay? Um, you really won't notice a need for that when you're backing the dolly up because the rear caster wheel is getting forced down to the ground. It's all good. When you're pulling the trailer forward like we'll be going down the road, that's when it's gonna to wanna to tip up on, on the underside, your, your wheel will come off the ground. So I get a call, calls quite often that, well, when I try and back up my trailer, this thing tips up and the wheel comes off the ground. Um, if the underside, so this is, a, this is an oddball coupler, right? I'm gonna take this off. But if, I, oh, I'm gonna, sorry, I'm gonna say one other thing too. But if, get this guy off, So on a normal trailer coupler that has a flat bottom, if the underside of that coupler, so if you get down eye level and you're looking at that, that thing needs to be parallel with the ground. Probably half the trailers out there have that. Half the trailers have it on a bit of an upward angle. If you have an upward angle, okay, and then we're trying to clamp square to that upward angle, that means the ball mount has to be on a bit of an angle. When that ball mount's on an angle and you're pulling on it, the dolly has to do this. It has to tip up to follow that same angle. So to fix for this, we have some tapered angle wedges. We have two styles, and you can see the angle on them. So it would actually go on the dolly like this, this or this. And the difference is we have one that only encapsulates the ball, and that's designed for the couplers that are flat all the way across the bottom. We have this style for trailer couplers that have that lower down weldment, or that little piece that drops down. And that's the very reason that we put this removable piece here in the first place, is that if you're not flat, you take this out, so when you drop your coupler on, that little piece of metal can go down and fill in this space. But if you have that and it is also at the angle, then you'll take this with these pins and you'll just drop it in those pins there. And now our coupler is, is compensating for that angle so it will stay square to the ground. When you're moving a dolly without it being connected to a trailer, it's best to take this handle and tip it up like that so it's not gonna rub on the wheel because in the down position, this will just hit the wheel. Here are the three batteries uh, with the quick, uh, clips already installed. I'm just gonna quickly show you how this works. Open up the bag with your protective boots. Obviously red is positive, black is negative. So we're gonna take these boots and we're gonna slide them up over the cable before they're installed. The battery will come with the bolts. So you can see here, here it is installed. Um, just like that, you're going to connect it up, um, two three-eighths wrenches, you're going to tighten these up, and then once, it's, once they're installed, obviously black to black, red to red, you're going to slide those boots back over top of the battery, and that way it protects the battery against any shorting if it hits the side because this is a metal case on the body of the dolly. So this is what your three batteries will look like once their quick connects are attached. We have in here, throttle. Now again, very carefully with this tape, uh, cut this stuff, try not to damage the throttle. And actually, uh, I do need the knife. There we go. So here you go. This is the throttle, set that aside. We also have in here a foam grip for your handle and three um, cable ties. We got the instructions for the charger, but that's pretty much everything in this box. All right, let's move on to the handle. Again, you're gonna want your knife and as carefully as possible without 
cutting and hand sand wrap it like this. That's the preferred way to do it. So we have got the main portion of the handle. You'll notice that on the underside, there's a couple set screws here. And then also inside of here is the portion of the T-handle. Now, the way this goes together, so we've got this little baggie with our two Allen wrenches we sent. The larger Allen wrench is for these set screws here. And the small guy, over on the throttle, you'll see here there's a little tiny set screw. The set screws are the bottom of the handle, so it actually would be in this position. But as we put it together, we're going to turn it upside down. Our throttle, this is the top portion, we're also going to turn it upside down. So it goes in like so. And then we're going to slide the T through. So with our foam handle, you'll see there's a plastic cap in the end of it. We're going to just carefully take that cap out, set it aside. There is going to be some writing on there, so have it so that the writing is not upside down, it's in the right direction. But the trick to this, because it's a really tight fit, is we just take a little bit of water, kind of plug, plug the end with your finger, just pour a little water in there, and then just shake it around so it gets everything all wet. And then as you slide it in, you want to rotate it and twist it. And just slide it right on, like so, and we'll center that up in a moment. And then our black plastic cap, we're just going to push in there. Okay, now, handles on, once that water dries, that's going to be nice and tight, it won't slip whatsoever. Now what we can do is go back, loosen these up just a hair, and we're going to center the handle in this space. So just we'll wiggle it back just a bit so we got the same amount of space on both sides. And then we'll tighten this up. Nope. Okay, now the thumb throttle, we'll tighten that up once we get it onto the dolly. So we're gonna take this over here. Close our lid, make sure the wires are inside. So the handle's gonna go in here like so. Those holes lined up, we're just gonna put our our pin in. Like that, click it shut. Alright, now you'll notice here this cannon plug. There's a definite shape to the bottom. There's a little notch in here that corresponds. There's a flat on that. It can only go in one way. So you orientate it just right, you wiggle it in, and snug that up. Okay, now with our cable ties, and you're also gonna want a pair of snips or side cutters. We're gonna take our cable tie, we're gonna wrap one at the top. So before you do tighten this all the way up, you want to just rotate this up. Uh, the angle you want this at is the handle coming up, you want that throttle coming out at about a 45, so it's in a convenient position. Now you can adjust that afterwards until it's comfortable for you. Once you kind of find the spot that works best, you're going to take your little Allen wrench and you're just going to snug that up and just ever so lightly. You don't want to you know, apply too much force on it because it is just a plastic body with aluminum. So just enough so it won't rotate anymore. We're going to take our second cable tie. We're going to wrap it around. And we're going to slide it down almost to the bottom. About an inch up from the, the bottom of that joint. And then our third one is going to go in the middle. And the reason we do this, we have this cable externally, is if something ever happens, you do damage your throttle, we can send you another one. It's an easy replacement. You're not having to fool around with fishing wires inside a tube. Take your cutters. We're just going to snip the excess off the cable tie. Like 
so. The throttle was now together. We can open our lid back up, and now you'll notice that the lid rests nicely on the handle. So inside the dolly, I just want to point out a few of the things in here. We have a, a main breaker in here, in case you super overload the dolly with way too much weight, like I'm talking in excess of 12,000 pounds, it might trip that breaker. Um, our main gray connector here, which is our 36 volts, and then we're pulling 12 volts off of each of the individual batteries. Inside one of the batteries, you'll notice there's these inline automotive style fuses. Uh, and what they're for is because this, this red line is feeding a relay, which then comes up and feeds the power to your trailer brakes. The black is also a fuse ground. Because occasionally we do run into where the wiring on people's trailers is not consistent or they have a short or it's an old trailer, that's why we have these fuses here, just in case there's a trailer issue. So, with these things up out of the way, we have a battery strap in here. So, just pull this out so it's almost to the end. I'm gonna hang it over the sides. We're going to drop our three batteries in. Okay, three batteries are in. We're going to fish this strap tight to the battery underneath the handle. We're going to clip it in place. And this is just in case of a rollover or something happens that the battery don't fall out all over the place. Okay, that thing kind of got tight. Let me... right. So we're just going to pull both ends tight, snug everything up. Now, we want to connect our power lines to the batteries, and it doesn't matter what order you put them in. We're just looking for 12 volts on each battery, so whatever works out convenient, we're going to clip them together. Basically, the wiring in the dolly, once everything is all set in place, you just want to bring the lid down, like so. Sometimes this thing, if, it, if it's catching, just give it a little tap on the back and it will spring the lid up and it will make it seat down. And we have a high speed, low speed, a fast, slow. So when we turn our power on, we should have lights come on our handle up here. Those lights are the battery meter indicator. Here, I'm gonna take this off for you. Um, so that, that's a good sign. That means that our motor controller is getting power and it's ready to go. When you do turn a switch on, it takes about 20 seconds for the motor controller to actually boot up because it's like a little computer. So for the first couple seconds, when I turn this on, nothing's gonna happen. It takes a few seconds and then it should start to move. Now, you're also hearing some clicking noise. So when I touch this throttle, if you listen closely, you'll hear this click. What's happening is inside our motor is an internal brake in there. And that brake is being released. We also have a bypass. So if you put that handle down, that bypasses the internal brake. But I recommend you leave it up all the time when it's in use. When you're storing the unit for any extended periods of time, put that down. And what it does is it separates all the brake plates so they don't fuse together. Uh, our fast slow switch over here so fast is going to give us full speed is 222 feet per minute of travel time and then when we go into slow we're basically telling the motor controller to only give us 20 percent of that speed even though we still have infinite acceleration from zero to that full 20 percent i don't want to drive too far here and we also have our throttle on the end of it there's a little button right in the end of the throttle you push that in and that changes our direction from forward to reverse. Okay, so we have two different tire options I want to explain. 
This gray tire is the standard tire that comes with the unit. Uh, these are an air-filled pneumatic tire. The back tire is solid, so it's a foam-filled tire. And the reason we do this is in some situations you may want to reduce the air pressure a little bit so you can actually get more grip on the ground texture. These are 450 pound rating per tire, so we've got capacity for 900 pounds of tongue load on your trailer. These black guys are a wide tire option, and you can see the extra width. There's literally about three times the surface area touching the ground as opposed to this gray tire. This is more of a grass and a gravel type tire if you want to move your trailer not on hard surfaces. Uh, again, when you order this black tire upgrade option, we now have a black tail wheel. Again, it's a solid tail wheel. But, you know, we keep the color matches so it looks aesthetically nice. So our black wide tire upgrade comes with the heavy duty steel rim. It's a black powder coat finish. It's very durable. If you do decide that you really want that aluminum rim option, we now can do this. So for an additional charge, we can put the aluminum rim in the black tire. It's a wider tire. So that is an option now. I want to touch on a few things that the unit standard does not come with. So it does not come with batteries. You need to get batteries either from us or locally. It does not come with the battery charger because there's options. Some people don't use the dolly very often and they you know, say they have a, a 12 volt car charger at home. You know, and they might use this a few times a year. Well, they can separate the batteries and charge it as a 12 volt, a 12 volt, a 12 volt. For convenience, you can get this onboard eight hour charger. It's fully automatic. You just plug it in, you set it and forget it, and it will maintain the battery. It turns into a float tender mode. So the batteries will always stay good. We also have a four hour quick charger, which does not go inboard. It's a, it's a bigger unit, externally mounted on the wall, wherever. Uh, those are more for our industrial customers, but that is an option. And one thing that is really critical is this power switch over here. Turn that thing off, because if you leave that power switch on and you store the dolly for a few days with the power switch on, it will drain one of the batteries because we're using that to fire a main relay switch in there. So it will kill one battery if you leave that on. So please always remember to turn that power switch off when you're not using the dolly.